Now, a lot of people are starting to think there are some rules for one group of people and different rules for the rest of us. Well, they're right. The boundaries of what is accepted or permitted depends on your politics, your race, your religion, your skin colour, and even your gender. And it's apparent in the media when one's political views shape how events are portrayed. If you tick enough affirmative action boxes, then you can tweet vile things like this and still get a job at the ABC. As you heard before, you can do unseemly things on Zoom and still work at CNN. It's all over the world. And we know that political incompetents are given a free pass if they champion the left's progressive agenda, while those opposed are actually stalked, harassed and often lied about. Boothby MP Nicole Flint is a case in point. What I say to the Labor Party today is they may not have held the spray can to vandalise my office with sexist slurs. They may not have held the camera pointed at me by the stalker or called me evil and get ups phone calls, but they did create the environment in which hate could flourish. And in the corporate world, people are now employed on the basis of their chromosomes or melanin levels rather than competency. But now we're also starting to see identity politics play a role in the law of the land. Across the country, we've seen governments impose all sorts of draconian measures to counter coronavirus. In places like Victoria, during the height of the pandemic, the police allowed the racist Black Lives Matter protest to go on while arresting people in their own homes for simply putting posts on Facebook. What's this? I'm in my pyjamas. What's I this? ultrasound in an hour. Yeah, pregnant. she's pregnant, so... Well, I'll take it easy. What's Stimulation this about? Can I have face... an ultrasound Just let me finish. in an hour? Let me finish and I'll explain. In relation to a Facebook post, in relation to a lockdown protest, you put on... Saturday. Yeah, and I wasn't breaking any laws by doing that. You are that. actually, you are breaking all. That's why I'm arresting you in relation to in front How of can my you children, arrest her? In that's front of my two children. Can't you just say to her, take the post down? Like, come I mean, on. I'm happy to delete the post. Yeah. This is well, now we learn that a similar thing has actually happened in South Australia. You see, despite South Australia being the home of the mysterious, highly infectious, and more dangerous pizza box strain of Corona. Authorities there allowed a highly charged political event to go ahead without a COVID management plan. The occasion ticked the box, you see. It was an invasion day, change the date rally. So it was a morally virtuous cause, according to the bureaucrats. And that gives them a free pass when it comes That's to complying with the law. The, now, the organiser of this event was actress Natasha Wanganeen. But documents released under freedom of information laws found that the protest rally or display of moral superiority, as I would refer to it, whatever you want to call it, it didn't comply with the police and health bureaucrats' requirements. The police were apparently told that a COVID management plan was actually in place, while well, SA Health has confirmed there wasn't one. So I ask, has anyone been held accountable for this stuff up? Has the high-profile organiser been fined for non-compliance with the law? I mean, these are very reasonable questions, mostly because you can be pretty sure that if it were a rally for Australian patriots, the organisers would most assuredly have been held to account for any infraction, whether it's deliberate or inadvertent. The man who obtained the emails and exposed this bureaucratic bungling is South Australian Senator Alex Antic, and he joins me now. Senator, this is outrageous. Has anyone been held accountable for what is a very significant uh, or potentially significant health stuff up? Well, Corey, look, I, I really can only tell you what I, I can see from the correspondence. Uh, uh, anecdotally, uh, it became clear that uh, the Invasion Day rally that happened on the 26th of January um, didn't have a COVID plan. Uh, it appears that it was raised uh, by SA Health and then, according to the documentation I've seen, was simply dropped. Uh, now, I should say, at the same time, um, the uh, walk for life, the um, uh, pro-life, if you like, uh, walk that happened um, back earlier in, uh, in February this year was subjected to serious uh, rigour when it came to uh, providing their COVID plan. Um, they put in their plan something like uh, October of the year before and found out only uh, two days before the event whether it was cleared or not. So they were put through the ringer 
Um, but it doesn't seem as though the organisers of the Invasion Day rally um, were ever chased up about having a COVID safe plan. And I might say the uh, outbreak in India um, that happened only a month or so ago was uh, actually um, apparently pinned back on one of these uh, one of these political rallies over there. So these can be very, very serious things. And um, we've got to have one set of rules for all, in my view. Well, I agree with that, and I think most Australians do, but these bureaucrats have no idea what they're doing, and they selectively enforce the rules according to the, the wokeness of the uh, cause being celebrated. So a walk for life is bad, uh, an invasion day rally is OK. Another example today of bureaucratic madness here in South Australia, the insanity of this. Twelve Victorian swimmers were granted exemptions by the South Australian Government to come here for the state, to the state for swimming trials. These are Olympic swimming trials, but that decision has been reversed because Swimming Australia doesn't have the, the recommended uh, SA Health COVID plan. So lives have been disrupted. Swimmers have been denied access effectively to qualify for the Olympics because SA Health have been carrying on like pork chops again. This is really beyond the pale, isn't it? Well, look, I think this is part of the problem we've got into with some of this bureaucratic approach to, uh, to COVID. I've said it before. Uh, I think some of the stuff we're going through is nothing more than COVID theatre. Um, you know, you look at the football, you've got to uh, put your mask on to get yeah. to your seat, then you can take it off, then you've got to put it up to get away. Uh, I mean, you know, is, where's the utility in this? Um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, this is all in the context of having had a recent crackdown in South Australia where small businesses were fined up to $5,000 uh, for simply not enforcing people coming through and scanning their QR code mm. on the way through. Um, look, I think part of the problem is people just want an even playing field. They want to be uh, one set of rules for all, no special exemptions. I think that's all Australians want. Uh, you mentioned the footy. I've got to play this again. What about the Chief Health Officer, Nicola Spurrier? What did she tell us to do with the footy last week in case the ball came our way? Here's a reminder. If you are at um, Adelaide Oval and the ball comes towards you, my um, advice to you is to duck and just do not touch that ball. Yeah, our very own version of Patches O'Houlihan from Dodgeball there. Now, Alex, I'm going to spring this on you, and I apologise in advance for doing so, but it's better to ask forgiveness than permission sometimes. The Liberal Party, it seems that they're rejecting members in South Australia under some sort of religious clause. People who have joined up have been accused of being Pentecostal Christian uh, branch stackers and uh, they're being denied membership. What do you know about this? Well, look, not very much, Corey, I have to say. Only, only what I've heard anecdotally, I might say. Uh, I understand that a letter has been sent out to uh, prospective and new members uh, telling them that their applications have been rejected. Uh, look, I'm extremely confused and concerned about this, I have to say, and, and the reason I say that is earlier in the week, um, the leader of the uh, government in the Senate, Senator Simon Birmingham, told um, ABC Radio here in South Australia that uh, words to the effect, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit here, um, that as long as people shared our values, as long as they were on the same page as the party, then they were welcome. And then a day later, um, the Premier said um, that basically more the merrier when it came to, uh, came to new members. Now, I should say both of those persons have votes on our state executive, and I assume, but I don't know, um, that this must have been cleared by the state executive. So if that's true, um, yeah. that is an extraordinary turn of events. Well, Alex, um, I understand a meeting of state directors was held yesterday in which they were quite proud about uh, rejecting these uh, religious people from joining the Liberal Party in South Australia. And the federal director of the party had to point out that the Prime Minister himself was a Pentecostal Christian. This was outrageous behaviour and it could quite possibly be illegal. What would be the result if they started saying, I'm terribly sorry, you can't join the Liberal Party because you're a Muslim? or because you're a Sikh or a Buddhist or you had another particular religious view. Why is it fair game to target those who have conservative political views and are actually religious as well? Well, Corey, I'm going to have to um, uh, claim a little bit of ignorance on this because I, I haven't seen the letter. I don't know um, anything more about it than, than I've heard anecdotally. Um, but look, that is true. The Prime Minister is Pentecostal. He is a uh, person of faith. Uh, and uh, I, I, I really do not see any premise that would be based on that. Um, we're not here to cancel Christians. Uh, I'm sure that's not the case. I don't know the answer, but uh, I, I find it all very, very puzzling and confusing, I must say.
Yeah, well, Alex Antic, I'm telling you now, heads should roll over this. It is outrageous. I know it's not your doing. Unfortunately, you're just here as the news is breaking. But this is a monumental scandal and the Liberal Party should be ashamed of itself. Anyway, we should be proud of you as well because you're doing some great work in the Parliament. Alex Antic, thank you for your time tonight. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Corey.